Hi, I'm Beryl, and the theme for today's episode is Pasta Night. I thought that the idea of Pasta Night was universal, and I was correct. We have five pasta dishes to inspire your next Pasta Night from five countries. So let's get started. Hi Beryl, my name is Rina. I'm from Biel in Switzerland, and I have lived here my whole life. The dish I want to share with you today is called Hörnli mit Zibbelerschwitzi, Rosemary und Apfelmus. That's Swiss German and in English it means elbow macaroni with onion, breadcrumbs and applesauce. I like it because it combines many different textures and flavors. You have sweet, you have tart, you have savory and then you have soft and crunchy and it just all comes together. The dish is fairly common across Switzerland because the combination of pasta with applesauce is very popular. Many people use different ingredients. I like this very simple variation that doesn't involve cheese. <laughs> and that's also what makes it different from stereotypical Swiss cuisine that's very, very heavy on cheese. So the dish is different from the Swiss tourist food like raclette and fondue that almost everybody knows. <laughs> I like it because it reminds me of field trips to school where we ate pasta with applesauce. And I think everybody should try it because the ingredients are very simple to get. It's the combination of pasta and applesauce is not that common, I guess. <laughs> so it can be a new experience for people and it's a really cool combination of different textures and flavors. So that's why I think everybody should give this a go. <laughs> I had to start with the applesauce and onion pasta. Not only does it seem very different to me, but the name is honestly, I think it's impossible for me to pronounce. How do you say it again? Hörnli. Yeah, I'm just gonna say pasta with caramelized onions and applesauce and breadcrumbs. <laughs> My gut reaction is how could this work? But I have done this show long enough to know that I should hold my tongue before I taste. <laughs> I knew it. I don't know why. I can't tell you why I love this, but I love it. You would think that, number one, this would be bland because there's not much going on. And you would think, number two, that the applesauce doesn't make sense because it kind of shouldn't make sense. But when it all comes together, it is delightful. There's like a sweetness from the applesauce and this kind of savory sweetness from the caramelized onions, a little bit of crunch from the breadcrumbs, I, I mean, I'm still looking at it and just thinking like, what? <laughs> Why am I loving applesauce on pasta? It doesn't taste like a dish for a kid. It honestly tastes like pretty refined. There's a lot of interesting flavors and textures going on here. I do think that a kid would probably enjoy it because there's nothing like that wild. And if they're scared of the onions, like you could probably just do the applesauce and breadcrumbs and kind of ease them into it. And then as the adult, you know, you could add the onions yourself and like eat together as a family, the same dish. If you're thinking to yourself behind the keyboard over there, oh, I'm gonna leave a comment that that's weird. Try it first and then leave the comment, but just, just try it first because well, I'm telling you, it's really good. <laughs> I'd like to take a moment and thank BetterHelp for sponsoring today's video. I think it's great that in recent times we are talking more openly about mental health and about taking care of our mental health. Doing that can be a lot of things. It can be taking a bath, going for a walk, but it can also include talking to a therapist. Talking to somebody who is not your friend or family member can actually be really helpful to get a perspective that feels less judgmental. BetterHelp is an online therapy service. They have a huge network of over 20,000 therapists who are licensed in a range of topics who are there to help and listen. To get matched with the right therapist, you go online and take a quiz and talk about your specific needs. 
You also talk about things that you are aiming to do in therapy. BetterHelp will take that information and match you with a therapist. And if that therapist doesn't work, you can switch as many times as you need to find the right one. If you're interested in trying it out, you can go to betterhelp.com, that's H-E-L-P, and use my code BARREL, and that will give you 10% off your first month. Hi, I'm Barbara from Jundiaí, Brazil. I want to share with you a pressure cooker pasta dish, or macarrão de panela de pressão. It's a one pot creamy pasta in a kind of rose sauce with any ingredients that you think will be nice with pasta. It's my favorite tuna, but you can add ham, sausage, cheese, or it can be made in a vegetarian version too. Pressure cookers are very common in Brazil to cook beans, beef stew, and hard vegetables like potato and cassava. The most used is stove pot, but some people are afraid of them, so the electric model is becoming popular. The pressure cooker pasta was popularized here by early 2000 TV cooking shows. It's part of our culture to take a dish and make it Brazilian style. I remember eating this pasta since my childhood when nobody wants to spend a long time cooking, but I still want to have a flavorful bowl of pasta. Nowadays, my husband and I make this dish every other week. It's so smooth, warm and tasty that you never imagine that it takes 10 minutes to cook. I hope you enjoy. Bon appetit! I'm sorry. Pasta in a pressure cooker? My mind has been blown. I... What? And it was perfect? There are many things that I know that my Instapot can do. I have done many things in it. One thing that I have never done and never even considered to do is to cook pasta in it. And, uh... I feel like a chump. That little trick was not only like a crazy time saver, it was a pot saver. It, I mean like, and the pasta came out perfectly cooked. It's, I'm at a loss for words. And it's making me feel like, gosh, I definitely need like a pressure cooker slash instant pot episode now because <laughs> what else can it do? What else can it do? Let's go with this pasta. The color, 10 out of 10. Like creamy, can you hear this? It is so creamy and it's got that like very pretty rose color to it. And I love tuna, so I'm, I'm excited. Oh my God. The tuna is good. It somehow became like a little bit more tuna-y in the Instapot. And maybe that's because it like cooked and it kind of was already cooked. I don't know if I'm the biggest fan of the tuna in this way. Like I like tuna with pasta, I've had it before. Maybe like cooked again, I don't know. But that's really neither here nor there because the recipe is like 100% adaptable. What I'm most excited about is the way of cooking it because all of it can be done in the pot and like that's just game changing. You know, Barbara in her recipe, which is in the description, she said like do bacon, do ham, do chicken, like do whatever you want. Go crazy, but the idea really is like pasta just happens in this one place and you can walk away and you don't even have to worry about it. And like, I love that. I love that so much. <laughs> The sauce on this is fabulous. I mean, the flavor is 10 out of 10. Creamy, but not too creamy, but like the right kind of creamy, the kind of creamy that makes you feel like, mm, that's a creamy sauce. Not the type of creamy where like your whole mouth feels like it's covered in like a sheen and like when you swallow, like your whole body becomes creamy. That's sometimes how I feel about really creamy pastas. I don't know, but this doesn't make me feel that way. This makes me feel good. <laughs> I love the little pops of corn and peas. They're bright, they've got good crunch. Mm. Man, instant pot pasta. What will they think of next? Hi, Beryl. My name is Jessica. And my name is Emily. And we live in Cabo San Lucas, Mexico. The dish I want to talk to you about today is called poblano pasta. Poblano pasta is a simple yet very tasty dish. The star of this dish is definitely the roasted poblano peppers that you blend in with Mexican crema, chicken bouillon to form this beautiful, green, creamy sauce that will then go over your pasta. The flavor of this dish is smoky because of the roasted 
poblano peppers and can be spicy depending on how many peppers you put in it. This is a popular Mexican dish for special celebrations such as birthdays, graduation parties, Christmas, New Year's, or simply just family get-togethers. I remember the first time I tried this dish was at a Christmas party with my then boyfriend, now husband's family, and his mom made it for us. And ever since then, it's been a staple at my house. I think people should try this dish because it is an easy Mexican dish to make, but a very delicious one nonetheless. I hope you enjoy it and buen provecho. Adios. Adios. Roasting those poblano peppers unlocked this memory from my childhood that pretty much every weekend my mom would roast bell peppers over the stove and then peel them and the smell of them and the paper bag sound and the kind of burnt skin on her fingers like I hadn't thought about that in so long and then while I was doing it, it was like visceral almost, like the memories were just like rushing back of the smell and the kind of like tactileness of it. It was really interesting and also, I have never roasted a pepper over my own stove before, so that was cool. Also, you know, thank goodness that my stove is working again. Otherwise, I could not have made this because you can't do it over like an electric cooktop. You have to have fire to roast the peppers, obviously. I'm wearing green to match the poblano pasta. Mm. Ooh, yeah. Mmm. There's like a little bit of a spice to it. It's like when people say they love spicy food, but it's not when the spice is making your ears hurt. It's when it's a beautiful part of the flavor of the food. That's what this is like. Mmm. When I was making the sauce, I ended up using Greek yogurt instead of the media crema that Jessica wanted me to use in the recipe she sent me, but it was because I couldn't find it. It was sold out and, you know, granted, I probably could have like tricked downtown or far more uptown, but I, did, I looked online and it said that you could use sour cream, that you could use yogurt, so I used Greek yogurt, unsweetened, obviously, as a replacement and I think it worked. I think it worked because it's creamy and it's really yummy. <laughs> I think what I like most about this sauce is that it's really redefining my notion of what a pasta sauce is. The flavors are very different from like a traditional Italian sauce and like the color makes you think it's pesto, but it's not pesto. <laughs> well, mmm. Perhaps some of you saw my video with the pasta expert, Silvana, and she was talking about the types of pastas that you wanna use for different sauces. I use the fusilli for this one because I wanted all the sauce to get caught in the nooks and crannies, and it did perfectly. So it is, you know, like, using the right kind of pasta sometimes really does, like, get you further. I think a spaghetti, might not have been as enjoyable because it wouldn't have held as much of the sauce. You would have really had to kind of like scoop up the sauce to get it with the noodles. This dish is vibrant and it is fun and like so far this episode is a 10 out of 10. Hi Beryl, my name is Carlo from Puerto Rico. The dish that I want you to try is macarrones con jamonilla or spam pasta. The dish is simply any kind of pasta, or preferably a tubular kind, that you finish cooking in a tomato and spam sauce with garlic, onions, peppers, herbs and spices. And since we love our carbs, we like to eat it with a side of white rice. It is flavorful, it is warm, it is quick and easy. That's some of the reasons that we like it so much. It is definitely comfort food for us. As a matter of fact, if you studied in public school here in Puerto Rico, you probably ate this often. For me, it reminds me of my mom. She used to make it for me and my siblings when we were kids, and now my wife makes it, and I still love it. It is one of the many ways that we use Spam here in Puerto Rico. Since we are a U.S. territory, Spam was brought to us during the Great Depression, but we quickly adapted it to our cuisine out of necessity, and it became quite popular in many of our dishes. I'm really excited that you're trying this dish and showing everybody how versatile spam can be. I hope you like it. Buen provecho. I was got at spam pasta. When I saw that email come in, I was like, yes, next. <laughs>
It kind of is reminiscent to me of the Hong Kong elbow macaroni and spam. Obviously, the one from Hong Kong is in like a broth as a soup. This is a pasta, but a lot of things are the same. Wow. Mmm. Tastes like a bolognese, but was super easy and cheap to make. Heck yeah. Yum. A lot of the ingredients here are definitely on the saltier side, but like I don't find the dish to be overwhelmingly salty. It's just like super savory. Unlike the applesauce and onion pasta, which had sweetness to it, but in a savory way, this is salty in a savory way. I mean, salty can't be sweet, can it? Can it? No. I like the macaronis like this. Like I like, I know that Silvana, when she did the pasta episode, you know, told us that it's best in like a soup, but like, I like it like this too. You feel like you get a big, good bite. Lots of little bits of pasta, lots of veggies, lots of spam. It's because they're all the same size, you know? It's just fun. My biggest takeaway from this pasta dish is the idea that like, it is very simple to make your own sauce that's a little bit more exciting than just plain tomato sauce, right? You can add just little bits of what is around your house to really pump up the volume on what could be a super plain and boring tomato sauce. This is neither plain nor is it boring. It is zingy and fabulous. Zingy. I feel like I could incorporate that into my vocabulary. Ooh, z like that's zingy. Could I? Could I be the type of person who uses zingy? Like, seriously? I mean, I did just now, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna practice. I'm gonna try it again. Let's just pretend that you do wanna make this and then you're like, ooh, I have all this leftover spam. What should I do? I have two spam episodes. Uh, they are linked in the description. Those will give you lots of amazing ideas of what else you can do with spam. <laughs> There's a lot out there and it's all good. Hi everyone, my name is Anshu and I live in Las Vegas, Nevada. I moved to the United States six and a half years ago from Kathmandu, Nepal, where I was born and raised. Today I'm going to talk about a very famous dish in Nepal called chow mein. Basically, chow mein is just Chinese-influenced Nepali noodles with a lot of toppings like veggies and or meat. We're going to talk about kima chow mein, which translates to ground meat chow mein. And uh, it's really simple to make. I think the nearest uh, comparison I can do is with spaghetti with meat sauce. But except here, the meat sauce is very dry and has a lot of Nepali spices to it. I like it because I'm a fan of noodles and it's really different. It's really versatile. You can make it with anything. And you know, you can just use the leftover food in your house to make it. So yeah, it brings back a lot of memories to me. Um, we used to have it at home, we used to have it at school, hanging out with friends. One of the best ways I enjoyed chow mein was with the sauce of Nepali dumplings called momos. But you can also enjoy it with sauces like um, Cholula, uh, Tabasco and Sriracha. It goes really well with that. Chinese culture has influenced a lot of cooking in Nepal. But I think in South Asian region that happens a lot, like we exchange each other's food cultures a lot and the combination we get is really awesome and we get to enjoy it a lot. It's really easy to make, like I said, it's like spaghetti with meat sauce so you can just make it the same way except with the Nepali spices and I think people should try it because it's so different, it's so versatile and it has a South Asian vibe without having to try too much. So yeah, I think you all should definitely try chow mein. Thank you. I was really excited by this recipe for a couple of reasons. One of them is that I have very fond memories of eating chow mein in India. And I was curious about how the taste would be similar to a Nepalese version. From making it, I think pretty similar. Yum. <laughs> I wasn't sure if I was gonna like the chicken in it, but I actually really do. I think that it's really good. The noodles that I use for this are these Hakka noodles and I bought them at the Indian grocery store near my house. They're just like kind of chewy, like big thick spaghettis, kind of. When you're making something like this, you wanna make sure that you don't overcook the vegetables because they're meant to have like a little bit of crunch still, but you have to work fast, right? Because everything's kind of tiny and it could get soft really easily. Oh. I have this peeler that I got after I did a salad episode where I made a green papaya salad and like I had to chop up the green papaya and afterwards I just got this peeler. I find it though like kind of hard to use. I just am never sure if I'm using it right. So if anybody, you know, knows how to use that peeler and saw me working in it, am I, is it, am I doing it right? A 
part of me kind of hopes that I'm not because then there's a correction and it'll work better. <laughs> To make this a little spicy at the end, I added some Szechuan sauce, which is a condiment that's commonly used in Indo-Chinese food. And it's it's like a chili sauce, but it's not as spicy and it's got like a little bit of sweetness maybe. I like it a lot. I like cooking with it when I'm feeling really lazy. You just like put that in and it kind of brightens up an entire dish. It's a lazy girl's condiment. <laughs> This dish honestly feels like delivery food. It's like really yummy, was really easy to make. I, I love that. This is also a really good dish to make when you have like nubs of leftover vegetables. Like the pepper that I used was like the leftover bit of a pepper because I had used some for another dish and I had this like nub of a pepper left and it worked out perfectly for here because you know, we always kind of end up with like quarters of things or at least I do in the fridge. This episode was super, super fun. I love the idea of a pasta night around the world and what everybody is making. I'm curious about other dishes. Leave a comment and let us all know about your version of pasta night. I'm leaving our other spaghetti episode here for you to watch and the video with our pasta expert in case you missed it. I will see you all next week.